in any Georgia school or college. Nor, in fact, did it read like it was written even in this country. This left-wing statement is calculated to breed dissatisfaction, discontent, discord, and evil. As governor of Georgia, I hereby call upon those who would cause hatred, strife, and discord in this state and in this capital city to cease and desist in their efforts, which can do much harm to all and can gain no good for anyone. Of nonviolence and of a peaceful approach. This is of the greatest importance to Atlanta a city which proudly proclaims to the world that it is too busy making progress to tear itself apart in bitter hatreds, recriminations, or any destructive violence. While everybody may not agree, this advertisement does perform the constructive service of letting the white community know what others are thinking. It must be admitted that some of the things expressed in this statement are, after all, the legitimate aspirations of young people throughout the nation and throughout the world. I was particularly glad... I read the paid advertisement purporting to come from students of the six affiliated institutions forming the Atlanta University Center. That statement was skillfully prepared. Obviously, it was not written by students. Regrettably, it had the same overtones which are usually found in anti-American propaganda pieces. It did not sound like it was... It is strange that this statement allegedly comes from a group receiving opportunities not enjoyed by most young people of both races. For nearly a decade now, salaries for Georgia teachers of both races have been equalized. New school plant facilities and school transportation facilities for Negro children have been provided. In many, many cases, these buildings are better and they are more modern and provided for white children. It should be borne in mind too that in those states with mixed schools, the Negro teachers lose out. Let it be further noted that white taxpayers are paying over 80% of the bill for Negro education right here in Georgia. All Georgians are working diligently to increase and to expand job opportunities for all of our people. In this way, and in this way only, can the standard of living and per capita income be raised to a level comparable to that of sister states. Human rights can only come through individual initiative and individual accomplishment, not by discord and not by strife the rights and the privileges and the joys of life in this country are limited only by the imagination and the capability of the individual and his willingness to work for their attainment. White or color, the individual must strive for opportunity and acceptance in society. No group acting through the use of any means or plan or artifice or device can achieve these objectives through the use of unorthodox and unacceptable methods. No group of persons utilizing the so-called sit-downs in defiance of the right of every man to conduct his business as he deems proper can accomplish anything. Nor can these demonstrations accomplish anything in defiance of the will and the opinion of the great body of our people and through infringements on the rights of the majority. 
Certainly all Georgians reject the implication in the charge that our capital city and our state is a land of inequality and injustice. Right here in Atlanta, Georgia, there are more Negro property owners, more bankers, more insurance executives, more insurance companies, more doctors, more lawyers, more real estate concerns, more Negro school teachers, and more colleges than in any city on the face of this earth. Surely this is a graphic illustration of the total and complete falsity and hypocrisy of these charges made in the irresponsible so-called paid advertisement appearing in today's press. I would like to make this comment about this ad. Some of our people think that we have moved too slowly in the field of race relations. And then there are others who constantly accuse us of moving too rapidly. But whether we have moved too rapidly or too slowly, we have at least tried to be of goodwill towards all our citizens, to preserve an atmosphere of harmony and when we move, to move in the right direction. This will be the policy of the city of Atlanta so long as I am its mayor. While everybody may not agree, I think that this advertisement does perform the constructive service of letting the white community know what others are thinking in this difficult field of race relations. And it must be admitted that some things expressed in this statement are, after all, the legitimate aspirations of young people throughout the nation and throughout the world. I was particularly glad to see the promise of nonviolence and of a peaceful approach. This is of the greatest importance to the city of Atlanta, which proudly proclaims to the world that it is a place too busy with progress to tear itself apart with hatreds, with recriminations, and destructive violence. Now, particularly for the city of Atlanta and about this ad, I would make the following comment. Some of our citizens think that we're moving too slowly in the field of race relations. And then there are others who have accused us of moving too rapidly and have done so quite bitterly. But whether we have moved too rapidly or too slowly, we have tried to be of goodwill towards all of our citizens, to preserve an atmosphere of harmony, and when we move, to move in the right direction. This will be the policy of the city of Atlanta.